morning, Lord, and we ask for your blessing here in our lives to be shown, to be felt, to be known, Lord God, that you favor us, Lord, you favor us with your grace, your kindness, Lord. Lord, you reached out and made a way for us, God. Um, you, you desired us. And Lord, just help us to walk in that love and to realize that this morning, that this is what you have accomplished, God. So we praise you and we thank you. We pray that you would have your way in all that goes on here today, Lord God, and Father, be with those who couldn't be here, Lord Jesus. We pray for Doug this morning, Lord, and for Mike and others, Lord, who are just struggling physically. Father, we pray your healing power be released to them. And we thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Have your way here, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
you guys as we use it. Isn't it good that we have this power working in us that can truly break every chain? It can break everything that binds us. You know, the reason we don't have freedom is because we don't ask for it. Amen? It's because we don't say, hey, God, I want this going for my life. We'll sit there and bear under it and, you know, complain about things or whatever it is, but it's when we begin to repent and say, Jesus, take this from me. Lord, whatever it takes, have my life. Have what, what you want in me. When we come to that place, that's when he can make the changes in us. And when we're willing to accept the corrections that he might bring, when we're willing to say, okay, I accept that from your word, Lord, or I accept that from what advice someone's given me, or whatever it might be, but we're willing to make those steps. You know, it's only a broken person that will go to that place. You know, and sometimes we have to get to a place of brokenness. We wonder why trials are in our lives. And I don't believe that God brings them all. Many of them are self-inflicted. We, we, through our behaviors, through the things we do, um, and just the nature of the world around us bring trials, but but he's able to break the chains of bondage, the, the chains of bad habits, the, the chains of behaviors in our lives that that really we can be free. Amen. We can be what he wants us to be. And he loves us. We need to know that. He loves us just where we are. That's the beauty. He loves me just the way I was the day he saved me. But he does want us to experience fullness the freedom that's been given to us. Amen? So there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, you know? And, and just believe that this morning, that there's something in your life that you just want to be free from. Lord, Lord, free me of whatever it might be. God, free me from these things, Lord. God, free us from the oppression from without, and Lord, from the things that are within, Lord. We just thank you this morning, God, for your Holy Spirit, your power that is at work in us to make us realize the fact that we're sons and daughters of God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God sloppy calls us his children. Hallelujah. Amen. He gives us a eternity with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So like we did a worship thing last night. I put brand new strings on, and I broke one there. I broke another one this morning in practice. Okay. <laughs> Who am I? 
some of you this morning, maybe you don't feel like you're God's child. Maybe you feel like there's no way he could really love me, but I want to tell you something. He loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. And you are his child, and he has a place for you. And you know, you can just declare that this morning. I am a child of God. Jesus purchased my adoption. And I thank you for that, Lord. We thank you this morning, Jesus. You know, I've been listening to some sermons recently, or really teachings, but anyway, on mercy and God's mercy. And it's just so wonderful to be reminded of his mercy. And, you know, she's taking us to, like, how he's merciful of Abraham, how he's merciful of Lot, how he's merciful of Moses, how he's, you know, and you go through and through. And, you know, we forget that sometimes in um, the way the world is and the world seeps in and the world doesn't have much mercy. It gives you maybe a tiny little bit of mercy if they think you're deserving. But that's not God. God gives you mercy in everything, even when it's your own fault. And that will walk into things purposefully going, I'm sorry, you know, I might not be kicking it, but like I'm going, I really want to do this, and I'm just going to do it. And it turns out not to have been the best decision. And yet God's mercy is still there for me, even though I willingly was disobedient to him. And I'm not saying that as a good, you know, be like, oh, I can do whatever I want, but we know that's not true. But my point is, is that his mercy is always there, and his love is always there. And what we need to do is be looking at what the word says we are, right? I, I'm a child of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am perfect because I am being made holy. Like all of these wonderful things that he tells us who we are. And as we meditate on those things, that will change that desire in us to have our own way, to do our own thing, and remind us that, you know, everything God asks of, of us is for our good, for his glory, and it's always better than what we want for ourselves. And just, you know, I just want that mercy. Like, I just realized that we don't think about that enough, how great his mercy is, and that it's there in every situation, even if it's of our own good. His mercy doesn't change just because we decide to walk into something that we shouldn't have walked into. I'm a thousand so 
God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is He. He doesn't make any mistakes. We just thank you, Father God. We humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God so that in due time you might exalt us. Lord, we humble ourselves under the dictates and statutes of your word, Lord. We humble ourselves before your Holy Spirit. There's always the constant thought that I don't deserve it or the love that he gives us is just too much or too good. But I think it's such a beautiful reminder that he is good to us because he has to be. Not because 
because we deserve it, but because that is who he is. And he can't help but love and pour that out because that is who our God is. And I'm reminded of that whenever I look at my own son and, you know, in the middle of the night when he's awake and he's not supposed to be, and it's frustrating, but I look at him and I cannot help but love him because that's who I'm made to be. I'm made to be his mom. And God is made to be our father, not made. He is who he is, but I think it's something that we do need to remind ourselves that yes, as much as we do not deserve his grace, his mercy, his love, we should accept it and receive it because he's got to just give it. He can't help but love what he has made. And that's who we are. We are his creation. We are his children. We're not just put here by accident. We are put here because God wants us here. Because God has molded us into who each of us are in a unique way on purpose. And he's going to love us no matter what we do. So we might as well take that in and love him back. And to add to what Olivia said, I was feeling in my heart um, that when we have bad earthly fathers, the enemy uses that as a mental block, like, man, I can't grasp for that. The Lord wants to lay those hurts down. He heals the broken and parted. He binds up all the wounds. What Christ did on the cross gave us access back to the Father whereby we are adopted. We have an inheritance. So even if the brain says, man, I can't wrap around it, it is a truth that those hurts be healed by the love of God. Thank you.
Open up your gates this morning. Open up the gates of praise. Open up the gates of your voices and your eyes and look up to heaven this morning and receive the King. He's coming. He's coming. We should be rejoicing. We should be rejoicing this morning because Jesus is coming back. He's coming back for his own and our hope is found in him. Thank you, Lord. Can you do communion first? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess we probably should do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Steve. Why don't you come on down? Okay, so Paul asked me if I would share something about communion and what it's all about. Um, so he catches me by surprise a little bit. But, you know, he was, uh, Pastor Paul was just saying how the Lord loves us and we need to know that and we need to focus on that. Well, what I think about is that he loves us too much to leave us where we are. So where are you today? You know, I know you're here. I can see that. But where's your heart? Where's your heart with the Lord? You know, where's mine? It's all about repentance. Repentance every day um, to bring us into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and what he does at communion, it's what he did at the Last Supper, is he brought his people around him and he said that he was about to give his life for them. He told them who they were to him, brothers and sisters. And communion, even the word communion means to gather together as one, when really, in some ways, we're not one. We, we all go our own way, don't we? You know, we have this agenda, this plan, this thing that we're going to do, whatever it might be. But what God wants us to do is to abide with him and let him make the plans for us. So that's where, where we all need to be. And that's what this is all about. First of all, it's about not going my own way, but gathering together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And that's what we are, you know, family, right? Age doesn't matter. Sex doesn't matter. Color doesn't matter. All that matters is you're a child of God. I'm a child of God. And that means he's our father, and so we're all siblings. And that's what communion is about, to make us siblings to, who abide with Christ together. And he says, I think it's in John, he said that if you, if you get close to the father, he will come and abide with you. He says, I, Jesus, and my Father will come and abide with you. That means if you are in communion with him, he will stay with you. He'll make you a new creature in Christ. If you're not a new creature in Christ, there's a verse that I hate and love at the same time. It says, it is appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. 
please don't go into judgment by yourself. Go into judgment with him. And then there is no judgment because somebody's got to pay for our sins. Somebody's got to. He did. So you don't have to if you're in him. So please be in him. And that's, to me, that's what communion is all about. So we'll... I haven't praised the Lord, if I may. <clears throat> I didn't pray about things for a long time. Two things. You know, Paul always says, die your flesh. I really didn't quite understand what he meant. You know, it's really been coming clear. God's always worked in my life in waves, it seems. Right now, I'm on one of those waves, and it's awesome. I've been praying about for a long time for my kids to come to Christ. Yesterday, I spent uh, the whole day with my son and his fiance and two of his friends. We went to some dirt park track in Jersey. Long story short... And while we were there, God came up by his fiance, you know, talking a few things. And she said, with her job being a cop, she really needs the center to bring her back down to earth from the things that she has to deal with being a cop and the things that she sees. So surprisingly, the ride home from North Jersey was about a two-hour crappy ride in the rain, but a beautiful conversation about God, beliefs, and everything else on the way home. So... I'm praying for the God to put the calling on my son's heart because we don't find him, he finds us. And I believe that's happened. So I want to give a praise to the Lord for that. Yes. And you have a daughter that we're praying for. I have a daughter that still needs a lot of prayer, yes. Amen. Amen. Don't be yes, Behold the Lamb of God who bears our sins away, slain for you, and we remember the promise made that all who come in faith find forgiveness at the cross. Behold the Lamb who bears our sins.
the table of the king.